Are you afraid of xenomorphs? Are you afraid of being captured by xenomorphs and taken to a xenomorph hive? Kill, uh, kill me before I turn into an egg. Well, no need to fear. Jerry is here. <coughs> Meet Jerry, the synthetic android hive xenomorph hive infiltrator. Yeah, Jerry, he will protect you from xenomorph kidnappings, hive webbing, and general xenomorph attacks. No need to fear the xenomorphs anymore. Jerry is here. So why don't you pick one up for 9.99.99? Jerry, the android, your personal protector. He's a beast. Just imagine you're on a mission to destroy a xenomorph hive, slowly moving toward the queen's egg lair. But a xenomorph quickly approaches from your blind spot, grabs your shoulder and spins you around. Trapped in its grip, you see the jaws slowly open to reveal the inner mouth. And then he starts talking to you. While this incident may not be as far-fetched as you think, meet Jerry, the synthetic xeno designed to infiltrate xenomorph hives. As such, he's nearly identical to a xenomorph in every way, except he has the ability to talk, as I just mentioned. Jerry appeared in Aliens Stronghold, also known as Aliens Volume 8 Stronghold, which was a four-part limited comic book series that was first published by Dark Horse Comics in 94. Named after Jerry Lewis, an entertainer from the 20th century, Jerry was a synthetic xenomorph developed by Grant Core, based on the original Xenohive infiltration synthetic Norbert, designed by Dr. Mayakovsky. Unlike Norbert, Jerry had a more complex but friendly personality, substantially improved reasoning skills and Asimov protocols that prevented him from harming humans. You'll be glad to know. The three laws of robotics, known as Asimov's laws, are a set of rules devised by science fiction author Isaac Asimov. The rules were introduced in his 1942 short story, Runaround, although they had been foreshadowed in a few earlier stories. The three laws, quoted as being from the Handbook of Robotics, 56th edition, 2058 AD, are Number 1. A robot may not injure a human being, or, through an action, allow a human being to come to harm. You'll remember this line was uttered by Bishop in Aliens. Number 2. A robot must obey the orders given it by human beings, except where such orders would conflict with the first law. Number 3. A robot must protect its own existence, as long as such protection does not conflict with the first or second laws. Anyway, in order to make him a competent xenomorph hive infiltrator, he was equipped with artificial pheromone secretors, so he could blend into the hive. Jerry apparently felt complex emotions as he was embarrassed when his supervisor, Dr. Casper Nordling, made him smoke a cigar using his inner jaw for a laugh. Grant Corps security auditor Joy Strunk was initially very wary of Jerry, believing that he was spying on her and her husband, Philip. However, when Joy and Philip found themselves drugged and waking up in Nordling's alien hive, Jerry came to their rescue. While attempting to aid the Strunks, they came across a smuggler named Schott, or Shaw or Schott, who was buying xenomorph eggs from Nordling illegally for biodynamic. Jerry did not get along with a fellow synthetic named Dean, mainly due to Dean's primary purpose, to destroy xenomorphs, meaning Jerry often found himself on the business end of Dean's plasma rival. Luckily, he was able to speak to save himself. In one incident, Jerry found himself threatened by Dean when helping the Strunks access Nordling's records. After Dean stood down, Philip attacked Nordling, but Jerry's first Asimov law kicked in, preventing Strunk from harming Nordling. When it came to the other androids, however, Jerry had no such programming and attacked Lizzie, another fellow synthetic, to defend the Strunks. Dr. Payne broke out the weapons after Nordling released the Xenomorphs from their hive into the facility. Jerry and Dean joined with other synthetics to combat the aliens. This allowed the Strunks to escape, despite Joy's objection of leaving Jerry and the other synthetics behind. Jerry has demonstrated the ability to navigate complex computer systems, as well as utilize a standard issue pulse rifle in a combat situation. At this point, a severely damaged Jerry manages to get on board Nordling's emergency escape pod, surprising the scientist. With his systems failing, particularly his Asimov protocols, Jerry performs Nordling's favorite trick of smoking a cigar, which was laced with one of Nordling's viruses, activated by extreme heat. The cigar was given to Jerry by Schott, which was originally given to him by Nordling himself in order to kill the smuggler. Jerry then puffed smoke in Nordling's face, telling him, But I still know a son of a bitch when I see one and the virus ends up killing him. What happened to Jerry is unknown, but since his systems were failing, it can be assumed that Jerry was deactivated or shut down. Or maybe he and Cole ended up teaming up. Now that would be a sick story. So that's an introduction to Jerry the Android. Check out Alien Stronghold if you want to see more.
Which alien video would you like to see next? Please let me know in the comments below. Now onto my Patreon squad. Check out these awesome and super cool supporters of Viral Killer. If you want to be in this Patreon squad panel, every video, cough up $1 a month. It ain't much. And if you want to help the channel but have no money, okay, follow these steps. First subscribe, then like the video, then share it. Twitter, Facebook, whatever. This is so useful that it might as well be a $5 donation. If you really want to help, leave a comment too. YouTube loves engagement. Thank you. Also, please follow me on Twitter and turn on notifications. Okay, I'm done.